Have you ever shot a mosaic, but then when you tried to put the images together, they just would not cooperate? Perhaps the plate solver refused to solve all the images together, so you could not use all the information in the final integration of the mosaic. Or perhaps all the images would plate solve, but one of the images was very different in character, so it ended up looking like it had been slapped over the rest of the mosaic. This can happen because the circumstances by which we shoot images or the techniques that we use can cause them to be so different that superimposing them through integration causes them to look bizarre or creates difficult artifacts in the final mosaic. So then what do you do? Do you leave out a lot of good information from the final mosaic? Well, that's exactly the scenario that's happening here. I have been trying to shoot Andromeda, but it's a cursed galaxy. I say cursed because almost every time I've tried to shoot that galaxy, the weather goes against me and I can catch only a few minutes to a couple hours of data. So on four of the five nights over four months that I tried to image this galaxy, I was only able to get anywhere from 15 minutes to two hours of data. Fortunately, I live in a low portal zone and on those nights I was only using a UV IR cut filter in front of the camera. So altogether with our dark skies, that made a good bit of data. But on one beautiful night, I was able to keep the telescope trained on Andromeda for 11 glorious hours. And I had a dual band filter in front of the camera because I really wanted to emphasize Andromeda's many stellar nurseries and other nebulae hidden among its stardust. But the dual band image was so different in character from the broadband images that it refused to plate solve with the broadband masters as a group in the plate solver. So I put together a mosaic base plate with all the broadband images, which played together just fine in the image solver and then ran image integration on the dual band image to join it with the mosaic. But the result was not good, filled with artifacts. The dual band image was just too different and it would not integrate well using Pixinsight's integration tool. No matter what settings I tried, it left color and edge artifacts around the mosaic. So what do you do with a situation like that? Do you let all that data go to waste? No, you find a better option. And one way to go about handling this is to tinker with the settings in tools like image integration. But if an image has very different intrinsic qualities of luminance and saturation, then just changing the way it feathers and overlays isn't going to resolve the problem. So you could turn to pixel math and scour the internet for equations or devise your own and then run countless iterations of those equations and see if pixel math can resolve the problem. And maybe it can, or maybe it can't, but that can be a long and frustrating process. But happily, there is a more powerful and elegant solution, layer-based compositing. So I'm going to skip over the process of making a mosaic in PixInsight. I'm assuming that most of the persons watching this video already know it. If you don't know it, it's a three-step process. First of all, you put all of your files into the image plate solver and solve them so that PixInsight can know where each master goes. Then you put all those processed files into the tool mosaic by coordinates and PixInsight will determine where those files go within the space of the mosaic. And then finally, you put all of those process files into a tool called Gradient Merge Mosaic, where PixInsight will assemble all the images together and attempt to match them up so that the individual images blend seamlessly with the other images. Now, what we're going to do is take that one image that wouldn't play nice with the mosaic, and we're just going to get it ready along with the mosaic to export into our layer-based compositing photo editor, in this case, Affinity Photo. That green colored image, I'm sure you know, is our 11 hour master, the one that was shot in dual band. I just haven't run spectrophotometric color calibration on it yet. So to prepare this image, I'm going to rotate it and run a process on it called dynamic alignment. The dynamic alignment tool will require me to manually identify some stars to use as reference points for aligning the two plates and rotating the image will just help me personally avoid some confusion while doing that. Now I'll just pick a few points on the mosaic, which is our reference plate. The dynamic alignment tool will try to find those stars on our troublesome plate below, and then it will rotate the troublesome plate and create a frame around it that perfectly matches the mosaic so that with matching frames, the troublesome plate can be snapped perfectly aligned and into place over the mosaic. So the mosaic plate above is our number one plate, which is the reference, and I'm selecting a few stars in it and making sure that the dynamic alignment tool finds the same stars in plate two. Sometimes it gets a little confused and you have to help it. Now we'll go ahead and run the dynamic alignment process. And there we have our troublesome plate, properly rotated and sized in a frame so that it will snap perfectly over the mosaic. Now, before we go into Affinity Photo, we have to take a few other steps to prepare the two plates. On both plates, we'll run a spectrophotometric color calibration. 
When the SPCC is done, we'll use the exterminators to deconvolve the stars, denoise them, and extract deconvolved star plates from the mosaic. Then I'll undo all those changes all the way back to the color calibration, and use star exterminator again to remove the undeconvolved stars from the plates and toss those as junk star plates. Now we have raw images of the galactic structure with only color calibration done. On these, I'll do a histogram transformation, applying the theory that I covered in my video on how to make perfect histograms. This will prepare both images by the same technique. This will produce nice flat images that are ready to be worked with by a typical layer-based photographic editor. Finally, we'll save the deconvolved star plate from the mosaic as a TIFF, and we'll also save the mosaic and the uncooperative image without stars also as TIFFs. Then we'll just open Affinity Photo and drag and drop these images into it to work with. We'll make the mosaic image our background layer. Then we'll duplicate the first layer and make it invisible. It's a good idea to leave the base layer untouched to serve as a kind of proof layer, a base upon which to build. We'll drag our 11 hour master of uncooperative data over this layer and use the snap tool to quickly align it. Since we previously rotated and aligned this image in PixInsight, and the frame of the plate is the same as the mosaics frame, this will happen instantly. Notice that I've done something different here in my development procedure. If you followed my previous videos, you'll be aware that I use a development process I've come to dub the Aesthetic Development Protocol, in which I use RC Astro's tools to deconvolve the stars, denoise them, and then remove them with Star Exterminator. Then I save the deconvolved star plate, and then I undo all the changes that I made to the image, stopping a color calibration which I retain. Then I run the star exterminator again and remove the undeconvolved stars, edit whatever non-stellar structure that I'm working on by stretching the histogram and applying the Curse Transformation tool to it. Then I run Noise Exterminator and Blur Exterminator again, the second time around using Blur Exterminator as an AI-powered sharpening tool. And then I push out into Affinity Photo for final developing. However, this time around, I'm taking a different path. In PixInsight, I did all the other procedures and then stretched the histogram, but I've made no other changes yet to the images. Not with the Curves tool, nor the Exterminators, nor anything else. This is because at this stage of the game, we need to work with raw data, almost unchanged. I stretch the histogram so that we can see what we're working with. But I otherwise need pure data here that's been untouched by tools, algorithms, and AI. That way, the information between the mosaic and the uncooperative 11-hour plate is going to match up perfectly. It's pure, raw information. Now on the layer panel, center right, that uncooperative plate is labeled Center October 2023, etc. And you can see in the image panel how different it is from the mosaic. The center image was a much longer exposure and it was done with a dual band filter whereas all the other masters used to make the mosaic were 180 seconds, about three-fifths the exposure time of the sensor image, and they were shot with a broadband filter. So the center image has very different visual characteristics from the mosaic, both in luminance and color quality, saturation, vibrance, everything right across the board. So it really stands out as different compared to the mosaic. But by pushing out into a layer-based photo editor that offers us the power of compositing, this is a mere nuisance. Here I've applied a hue composite to the center plate layer. This makes the troublesome borders between the center plates and the mosaic plate vanish. But I don't like what it does with the color, so I'm going to move on. The next best compositing option seems to be Lighten, which gives us better color and carries over more information related to sharpness or clarity and contrast. You can still see the boundaries between the center plates and the mosaic, but they are much fainter. Now, they are only a minor nuisance that we can deal with easily since we are working with a layer-based compositing editor. Let's start by making those borders disappear. With the center plate selected, I'm just going to go to the Erase tool, set the flow to 10% and the hardness to zero, and I'm just going to erase out those hard edges so that they transition smoothly into the background of the mosaic. Now it's time to adjust the curves, and I know I go on and on about what a powerful tool the Curves Transformation Tool is, but it is. The Curves Tool in Affinity Photo is just as powerful as that found in PixInsight, but it's implemented somewhat differently. Among other things, I like that we can see the waveform of the images that we're working on instantly within the Curves Tool, 
The tool itself though is small, it makes it kind of troublesome to make fine changes within it. However, it has this interesting picker tool. We can select the picker tool, go anywhere on the image that we are working on, click the left mouse button and hold, and drag the mouse button up or down, and the curves tool will select that exact color and luminance value and modify it as you move your mouse on the curves window. It's extremely precise, it just takes a bit of getting used to. But I'm going to go through my usual process of darkening the space and bringing up the midtones and pulling down the brightest brights because the core of this galaxy is completely blown out. All right, with the center plate composited over the mosaic and the curves properly balanced out, we're going to take new save TIFFs back into PixInsight, and here I'm going to run the Noise Exterminator and then the Blur Exterminator. This time, not using Blur Exterminator as a deconvolution tool, rather using it, as its name says, a Blur Exterminator. I'm going to use it to sharpen up all the features in the galaxy. In actuality, I've already run two iterations, one with the default settings, which I did not care for the results of, they were over sharpened and another with a sharpening tool set for luminance only and sharpening turned down to 30%, which turned out to be under sharpened. And now I'm running what will turn out to be the final iteration, with sharpened stars turned all the way down to zero. Sharpened non-stellar turned down to 0, 0.40, about 20% less than normal, and all the other options at default. This gave a great result, with well-sharpened non-stellar structures and no artifacts in the image. When the blur exterminator is done, We'll save the final result as a TIFF so that we can drag it back into Affinity Photo in just a moment. However, you can see here that while the Blur Exterminator has done a great job sharpening up the non-stellar structures, it has also sharpened up the edges, not only of the uncooperative center image, the one with 11 hours of data, but it sharpened up the edges between all the images that were joined together in the Mosaic tool as well. Fortunately, this is only a small problem because in a layer-based photo editor, we can make very carefully focused edits to each section of the total image and enhance those edits with compositing. Compositing, by the way, is basically what you would call in PixInsight pixel math, except instead of having to fiddle with equations and dig around the internet to find some numbers or variables that might work and then crunch it all and see what the outcome is and fiddle with that ad infinitum, you can see the results dynamically and immediately as you work, which makes the whole process go a lot faster and frankly be much less painful. So before I adjust any of those new artifacts, I'm going to go ahead and drag the star plates over the image. The reason being the star plates will be composited over every other layer. We'll use the screen composite option, which will allow the stars to show and mute out the black space. But the screen option, especially when it's applied to bright lights and black space, which is exactly what a star plate is, often helps mute problems in lower layers. So I want to see what applying the star plates over these layers will do to help us. The star plate will snap in place to the rest of the frames and instantly and easily fit perfectly. Let's apply the screen composite option and see what we get. As you can see, it helps a lot. The solution still isn't perfect, but it helps a lot. I could go with a more aggressive compositing option such as soft light here, which pulls down dark regions harder, and it would seem to resolve our issues, but I feel it over contrasts the galaxy itself. To get the best version of the Andromeda, we'll need a more complex and more refined solution. Since what I need to do is get rid of saturation artifacts, I'm going to duplicate the layer that contains only the galaxy, place a curse tool in that layer, and draw down the saturation until all the color artifacts have vanished. As you can see, this decolorizes the galaxy, which is not an effect that we want. It is easy to resolve, however. We'll open up the Erase tool, and with the desaturated galaxy selected, we'll just erase out the desaturated galaxy so that the saturated galaxy returns with its full brilliant color. And this leaves behind our beautiful galaxy with its full and amazing color, and our stars with all their color, but the color artifacts in the space have been eliminated. Then on the color layer of the galaxy, I'll use curves to bring down the brightness of the core, which was amplified in compositing, correcting the luminance balance. Now we're nearing the end and we aren't going to need to add any more layers. So at this point, we can crop the mosaic to properly fit the frame. Now overall, this image looks pretty good, but I think two things need to yet happen. I want to see more definition in the lanes of stardust that surround the Andromeda galaxy. I want to make them darker and bring out their detail, make them stand out more. 
And using pixel math, I mean, I'm compositing, I can make this happen very quickly and easily. I created a layer for clarity adjustment, did not change the clarity, but selected a hard light composite in PixInsight. This acts as if a bright, focused spotlight is shown on everything in the image. It seems to blow out the core, but helps to define the dark lanes of Stardust as well. I exported this as a TIFF, then brought it back into the image as a layer. I added this layer to the layer panel near the top, just below the star layer, and then selected an overlay composite for this layer, which carries some trace of its luminance and its saturation, and especially its sharpness and contrast down to the lower layers, giving us a semi-finished image that looks like this. This is good, but I want to darken the space more surrounding the galaxy, bring out the structures and the star haze around the galaxy, and improve the color of the nebulae that are stellar nurseries all throughout the Andromeda galaxy. So once again, I go back to that clarity layer, and this time I had it apply a glow composite to all the layers below. This compositing function makes any tightly focused points of saturation glow, and thus really brings out the color in the nebulae, especially the stellar nurseries throughout the Andromeda galaxy. Of course, if you wanted, you could always buy an HA filter for a couple hundred bucks and do the same thing, or you can just do it digitally here. The information is already captured on your camera. It can be developed out if you want. I exported the Glow Composites image as a TIFF, and then re-imported that TIFF back into our layer panel, placing it just below the star layer and above the previous hard light layer. Now, all we want from the Glow layer is its color, so I selected the Color Composites option, which transfers the color from the Glow layer down to all the layers below. On the Glow layer, I erased out the overbrightened galactic core, and this gave us the final image of the Andromeda galaxy that we've been working toward. A beautiful mosaic that incorporates all the information captured over the last four months. Despite how uncooperative the Andromeda Galaxy was, and despite PixInsight's Image Solver script's refusal to plate solve all the files, and its limitations and difficulties in integrating such very different masters. By creating a mosaic from all the broadband images in PixInsight, we were able to create a base layer that could be imported into Affinity Photo for very specific editing. There, we could also import the uncooperative 11-hour plate of dual band data, and working with it as just another layer, we could integrate that data using the power of layer-based compositing, which allowed us to look over the many composites options without having to mess with various formulae. Find the option that best transferred the important information, information related to dynamic range, contrast, sharpness, color, and its various traits, while minimizing the artifacts of integration, and then, because we were working in layers, we could very specifically nullify those artifacts with a number of simple techniques, such as setting the erase tool to create a gradient and erasing out the edges where the various photos came together, and creating an extra layer of the galaxy that was entirely desaturated, and superimposing that over the rest of the image to nullify the remaining color artifacts in the dark space only. But, Importing the image into Affinity Photo and using layer-based compositing allowed us to carry this edit much further. We were able to use the power of layer-based compositing to create yet another layer that emphasized contrast which further defined the dark lanes of Stardust within the galaxy. And then we were able to create yet another layer which emphasized the points of glowing nebulae within the Andromeda galaxy. And then merge this also into the image carrying over only the desirable color characteristics. In the end, this allowed us not only to integrate all the data that we had available, but create a better, sharper, more brilliant, and more detailed image than we would have been able to get otherwise. As always, thank you for watching. I know I take a different approach to editing, but I am a firm believer that if we spend thousands of dollars on equipment and all night or multiple nights shooting a single image, then we should get the best image possible. And by pushing the developing technology, we can do so. We can take the data and equipment that we have available and get far better final outcomes than we ever thought. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know. And please take a moment to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Now get out there and shoot the sky.